Trust me, I'm just as confused as you are right now. Ordeal where you can figure out something. That's what mine's is about, you know? And, yeah, and no such thing as uh, energy from nothing. Well, mine is energy itself. It's mind over matter. I mean, you can, uh, hey, we don't use nothing of our brains. I don't know how much you use, you know. You might use 5%, 10 I don't know how smart you are, dude. I use 100% of my brain, and so do you. As for mind being mind over matter, uh, energy, uh, the mind runs off of glucose. That is energy. That is why you eat stuff. Uh, if you didn't eat stuff, your brain would die and you'd starve to death. The brain is powered by sugar, so I don't understand why you think that mind just creates energy or something. Anyhow, barring pathology, every organism that has a brain uses 100% of it. I mean, you talk pretty, like you know a lot, but it ain't got nothing to do with it. It's got a lot to do with quit doubting these people. It has absolutely nothing to do with doubt. It has absolutely everything to do with what is right and what is wrong. If somebody comes up to you and says 1 plus 1 equals 7, are you supposed to not doubt that person? Do you think it is fair to tell that person that 1 plus 1 equals 2 and not 7? I do. You seem to believe that having incorrect uh, answers to questions is a good thing. It ain't. Hey, uh, and I also got a, like, yeah, I know you probably don't want me to talk about my uh, gravity uh, generator. You probably, uh, not my gravity, I'm talking about magnet generator. I got a good magnet generator, you know. It's been, uh, that was my first, uh, my first uh, invention. Was Any idea that you might have a, of a magnet generator has already been thought of several hundred thousand times by several hundred thousand people, and they will all fail. I should um, tell you, I suppose you do not know, that magnetic fields are static unless you vary the uh, magnetic strength on the field electromagnetically by using some sort of an electromagnet. Use a, well, of course, that uses energy, external energy, otherwise known as electricity. You cannot, because the universe says you cannot, Use a permanent magnet to perform work. You have to add a source of energy to a magnetic field because magnetic fields are static. You can use a static magnetic field to alter the trajectory of a charged particle, a positron or a electron or a proton or a um, alpha particle, I guess you could, uh, I think that's right, an alpha particle. Um, alpha decay particle. You can use a magnetic field to alter their trajectory, but you cannot use a static magnetic field to accelerate a charged particle unless you um, make the magnetic field variable by applying energy to the magnetic field, and then you can uh, accelerate the particle. So, it is a fundamental mathematical and universal law against using a, a permanent magnet to create work, which is what you are saying your idea apparently does. Already been refuted, and it was um, proven such um, 1947, I believe, by Richard Feynman and his team. And I'm not sure, but I think he might have gotten the, uh, a Nobel Prize in Physics for that work. Anyhow, it is impossible. I completely forgot why I'm uh, making this video. I feel you deserve to uh, understand why your gravity ball um, idea cannot work. Um, I know you are not going to believe me. But a heck of a lot of very bright people have proven it mathematically. And when you say that it cannot be done, you could be right, you know. A hundred million people can say it's impossible, and one person can come along and say, Ha ha, I proved you wrong, and then prove them wrong. It is possible, but we have to see something a whole lot better from you before you will convince anybody. The reason why you cannot 
arrange masses in a gravity field to lift themselves is because gravity is a conserved field. Suppose you have a mass and the mass is resting in a uh, gravity well, such as this flashlight here. Wah, wah, wah. I don't know how many kilograms this is. I don't know. Uh, let us say it's, uh, let's see, about five ounces. I don't know how many kilograms that is in, uh, here on uh, Earth's surface. But if I lift this mass, um, let's say one foot, or let's say one meter in Earth's gravity well, and if this was, um, I don't know, one pound, let us say, I've lifted it at maybe about 0.6 newtons of force to lift it. Uh, we calculate force in newtons, which is, um, you know, newtons per meter is the same thing as saying newtons. If I lift this a meter, I do about 0.6 newtons or something like that. And I let go of this mass in the gravity well, and it falls back one meter. You know how much energy it took to move that mass up and back down again? Zero. The net energy expended is zero. However, that is only in a vacuum and only if it didn't strike anything and just somehow kind of magically came to rest one meter away. When I lift, I have air friction and the air heats up when I lift this, and the air heats when I drop it, and that thermal agitation, that heat caused when this is going through the atmosphere, saps some of that kinetic energy either going up and going down. So it is always a losing proposition. So now you're saying, well, I can lift it and then drop it again in a vacuum, so you don't have the... Um, thermal agitation from the air, the friction from the air. Um, of course, when it strikes the table here, that creates kinetic energy, and that creates heat in the table, and it creates heat in the uh, flashlight here. And since it makes noise in an atmosphere, that noise is also kinetic energy, and that is also dissipated as heat. But let us say that for some reason the mass is lifted a meter and then is dropped a meter in this gravity well and there's no atmosphere, it is vacuum and it just kind of magically comes to rest well, once again after it has fallen one meter and there is no thermal agitation, there is no um, heat loss anywhere the net energy loss from raising it and lowering it is zero also. So you have a um, net gain of energy and a net gain of energy is zero. Now, you are um, saying that you can somehow connect your um, weights in a gravity field to a generator. You know what happens when you put a generator to that system of yours? That's right. It's called friction. Friction, of course, is heat. It is thermal agitation. If you have a coil in your generator, that coil is going to heat up when you create uh, electricity in your generator. That electricity is going to have an electromagnetic field, and that electromagnetic field is going to agitate um, the atmosphere, unless you put it in a vacuum. That agitation is going to cause heat, um, and that heat is going to be energy lost to the atmosphere. Uh, the friction on your generator gears is going to create heat and that's going to be energy loss. And of course um, taking the electricity from your generator and powering light bulbs and water pumps and stuff like that, all that energy is lost. Now I ask you, where the hell are you going to get that energy to do all that? The best you can do is to create a system that uses a hell of a lot more energy than it creates because energy cannot be created. As soon as your system 
goes to the lowest um, possible state in the gravity field, it will stay there until you add a source of energy. Always, forever, without exception. And I, um, like I said at the start of this video, um, you deserve the, the explanation for why your idea cannot work. <sighs> of course, you're not going to believe me.